Hey guys, welcome back to Burst Review. Now I'm sure many of you have already seen that everyone's favorite comic book supervillain and anti-gun zealot, Senator Dianne Feinstein, along with Senators Chris Murphy and Dick Blumenthal of Connecticut, have reintroduced a new assault weapons bill. Be still my beating heart. Self-titled a bill to ban the sale, transfer, manufacture, and import of military-style assault weapons and high-capacity magazines, the bill appears to be written by someone whose writing and research skills consists of not even being able to utilize Google half-decently, not even with a phone, and using Control-C and Control-V to copy and paste the original bill. At least, so it would seem. As a kid, my dad taught me about this old saying that apparently turned out to be an aphorism called Hanlon's Razor. The official one is, never attribute to malice that which can adequately be explained by stupidity. And that is how I and many others have thought of our liberal antagonists for years. Naive fools attempting to fix a perceived problem the only way their limited understanding of this problem can permit. But with the combination of their behavior during the Trump administration coupled with the contents of this new bill, I'm certain that the ringleaders behind it know exactly what they are doing, and that their actions prove that the end goal of all of their anti-gun efforts is the total and complete ban and confiscation of firearms in the U.S. Now, if you're about to pause the video and call me crazy or suggest that I'm an idiot or well, any number of insults you want to throw at me, just listen a little bit longer before condemning me. First off, I don't think everybody involved is evil and stupid, but rather one or the other. For instance, even though Senator Blumenthal lied about his service in Vietnam, I have misspoken about my service. I don't think malice is the driving factor to his actions. In this case, it appears to be pure stupidity. After all, this is the same senator who has gone to great lengths to ban the so-called ghost guns. These otherworldly sounding spectral shooters are in fact a 3D printed proof of concept firearm. I mean, most of these are only capable of firing a single shot before destroying themselves because, you know, they're made of plastic. Despite this, Blumenthal warned of the threat these so-called ghost guns pose to civilians in the classiest way possible. That's right, trying to scare the hell out of Americans. Coming to a theater near you, coming to a school near you, coming to a sports stadium, to any public place. Stay classy, Connecticut. I mean, but surely, not Every co-sponsor of the bill is such a valor-stealing, fear-mongering imbecile. What about Senator Chris Murphy? He always talks about common-sense gun reform and about meeting with the NRA and, and meeting gun owners halfway. Sure, he threw a political tantrum by filibustering for 15 hours in protest of the fact that neither Congress nor the House would pass their proposed anti-gun legislation, which would allow the government to secretly prohibit anybody for any reason for owning a firearm without ever being held accountable and without ever having any recourse for anybody affected. But at least he didn't accuse Republicans of supporting terrorism and arming ISIS by not passing these laws. Oh, you know, never mind, actually, that's exactly what he and Elizabeth Warren did in a now infamous tweet. But what about California Senator Feinstein? Everyone loves Feinstein, right? Except for anybody who ever listens to the words she says or has to look at her face. I mean, Feinstein is arguably the biggest driving force behind gun control in the Democratic Party. She has introduced or co-sponsored a whopping 79 anti-gun bills since 1995, according to the Library of Congress. Now, while she may have softened the tone of her rhetoric, Feinstein already revealed her true motives back in 1995 during an interview with 60 Minutes. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. But lackluster character of everybody involved set aside, the way the current bill is written that's what shows that Feinstein still wants to abolish private gun ownership. For instance, in the addition to the original assault weapons ban's contents inside of this new bill, it also adds a provision to prohibit the transfer of so-called high-capacity magazines. This is what is known as a victory by attrition. Eventually, all legal owners of these quote-unquote high-capacity magazines, they will die. And when that happens, no one will be able to own these magazines anymore. Think I'm crazy? Ask Canadian machine gun owners, those actually still alive. Yeah, those guys, they can't. Those get melted down by the RCMP. But even this, even this is not the proverbial smoking gun. No, that honor belongs to the final bullet point under the Updates to Assault Weapons Ban of 2017 header inside of the bill on Feinstein's website. Here's the quote. 
bans Thordson style grips and stocks that are designed to evade a ban on assault weapons. Right there, right there. That gives away the true motive behind everything. It's de facto proof that compromise and working within the confines of existing laws merely delays the inevitable. Why? Thornton Customs is a small company in California that manufactures AR-15 and other firearm components. One of these products is the FRS-15. It's a quote-unquote featureless rifle stock, get it, FRS, for the AR-15. The stock is designed to modify the AR-15's furniture so that it removes the pistol grip to meet the definition of a quote-unquote featureless weapon as defined in a previous bill set forth by Senator Feinstein. Yet despite this fact, Feinstein added this component to the list of quote-unquote assault weapon features. This has enormous implications, since according to gun banners, the reason they want to abolish pistol grips on semi-automatic rifles is because they, and this is a big quote here, they allegedly facilitate spray firing from the hip. Yes, yes, I am acutely aware of how stupid that previous statement is, but that's unimportant in this instance. What's important is that it proves that the only thing that will make these people happy is the total and complete elimination of firearms in the hands of civilians. That might seem wild to people out there that are watching this that are not in the gun world. They're like, well, that, if it circumvents it, it's one of those loopholes. Anybody who ever uses the term loophole is full of shit. Here's the thing, if they truly wanted to fix the problem we have with mass shooters, A, less coverage, B, better mental health, and C, destigmatize getting mental health assistance, right? How many people out there don't wanna ever say, yeah, I saw a shrink or I saw a psychiatrist. They don't wanna have that negative social stigma of being someone who's mentally quote unquote broken, which is not accurate. Everybody needs help in some way, shape or form. If you were in a terrible car accident and you injured your leg really, really severely, you wouldn't say, screw it, I'm gonna walk it off. No, you'd get physical therapy to get you back to where you were. That's just what humans are. We take time to heal. We are unfortunately not Wolverine. So what am I getting at overall? Here's the thing, right? It's just another freaking example of why gun owners never want to give an inch to anti-gunners. History has proven that gun grabbers never relent. They always want more concessions. And they never even give us anything. They'll say that it's common sense reform or that gun owners need to compromise, but in reality, they want to abolish private gun ownership and they want us to do it for free. So why don't they just come out and say it? Well, they don't have the guts to say it outright. So instead, they try to destroy the Second Amendment with a thousand tiny cuts by dividing gun owners and conquering each tiny little group individually. The whole, at first they came for so-and-so, but I did not stop them because I was not so-and-so. Prime example, certain hunters out there who only use their bolt action or lever action deer rifles to hunt once a year don't necessarily care about the Second Amendment. I'm not saying that no hunters care. I'm not saying that all hunters don't care. I'm saying that there is a subsection of hunters who just want their deer rifle and they don't care about anything else, right? For those guys, it's just a hobby. It's not that important to them. They will easily and readily surrender so-called high capacity magazines and semi-automatic firearms because they don't see the need and they wanna keep their guns. In a similar but also very different way, I don't care about ultra expensive over under shotguns. I don't use them, I don't care for them, but unlike the previous group, I wouldn't see them abolished just because I don't personally use or like them, and I wouldn't see them given up to save something else. And that is why we as gun owners need to resist every single piece of anti-gun legislation because we already know that both the NRA and Trump, our president, will sacrifice our God-given Second Amendment rights as a bargaining chip to get other things done. So what's the answer? Do we just bitch and complain on the internet? Well, that's part of it. The other part of it is we have to let the NRA know that we're not gonna continue to support them if they don't accurately and fairly represent our interests as shooters who are more than just simple hunters. Thanks guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more burst reviews.